let the stories begin. These stories come from the Kalevala, which is held to be the Finnish national epic. And it was composed in the early 1800s by Elias Lernrot, and it was composed as a poem. For all that it was composed as a poem, it was drawn together from material that was in the oral tradition of Finland, in particular uh, the area of Karelia, um, for hundreds, if not thousands of years. And these stories, these stories were originally supposed to be sung. When people met, they would clasp hands, they would sit facing each other, and they would sing to each other together these stories. But when Elias Lernrot pulled them together into the poem, then he spoke of snatching them from the roadside, of plucking them from the heather, tearing them from the brushwood, drawing these stories from the mud of the footpath that crossed the whole wide country of Finland. And it is that landscape that I want you to have in your minds now. This landscape, at a time not unlike this, was dark, and it was cold, and the winter frost was thick upon the ground, and the mud of the footpaths, and the plants of the roadside were hard and frozen, just as in the darkest, darkest depths of winter. But this was because the sun and the moon had been taken, had been stolen, had been pulled from the sky and hidden away. And not only that, but all the fires of all the hearts, of all the homes in the land, that is known as Kalevala, had been taken too, had been stolen from those hearts, had been pulled from those homes, leaving the whole land cold. No warmth, no light, nowhere to huggle up to with your friends and family, no way of warming the dark night through. And the one who had stolen the sun and the moon and all the fires was Lohi, the hag of the north, the mistress of Northland, an ancient and wizened and hunched but powerful and wiry witch well-versed in all the ways of magic. And she had stolen the sun and the moon from the sky and all the fires from all the hearths of Finland because she was vengeful and angry and outraged and determined to be victorious over her greatest rivals, and such a rivalry this was that had been going on for many a long month or year between her and some of the heroes of Finland. Lohi had stolen the sun and moon, the fires from the hearths, because her enemies in Finland had recently got the better of her, and this was her way of putting them back in their place. Who were these heroes of Finland? Who were such bitter rivals of the Hag of the North? Well, first and foremost among them was Venamun. Steady old Venamoinen, the eternal singer, the old, old man, the wanderer across the world, 
who some say was a shaman, versed in the ancient arts of spirits and the earth around him. Some say might even have been something of a god. But in the Kalevala, it says that whatever he was, he was the first. He was there at the beginning of it all, when first the land was shaped up from out of the waves under the sky. Then he was born. Then he walked upon the land. And much that came to be in the world came about because of his works and his singing. And Venamoinen walked now on this dark, cold land with no light and no warmth. And he tugged at his beard and he thought to himself, what can be done? How are we to be? How can we find a way to live like this? Sun and moon should not be allowed to be stolen. Fire and warmth should not be allowed to be taken and gone. I, I shall go looking. I shall seek them out and I shall find them. And so Wainamoinen stood at the edge of the forest, the edge of the great pine trees. And he looked out across the dark horizon and what should he see? What should he see but a spark, a flash, a burning light? streaking down through the sky, a falling star almost. A sign of fire. For up there, up in the sky above, the old man of the sky, Uko, Yumala, the oldest of all the gods, he too had looked out upon the world and he had said, what is to become of this? Why should there be no light? Where has the fire gone? And so he had taken a sword shining and sharp and struck sparks from the nails on his fingertips. And those sparks had caught and he had treasured them and nurtured them and blown upon them until the sparks flickered and smoldered into life. So he had light there in heaven and to keep this light alive, he had given it to a lass of the air, an air daughter, a spirit to watch over this and she had watched and she had tended the fire, but as you may well know, fire is hot. And it was not easy for the air daughter to keep hold of the fire. And she tried, she tried as she might, but however skillful and strong she tried to be, it got harder and more and more painful to keep hold and in the end she could keep hold of it no more and she had to let go and the fire dropped and that is why Venamoinen, steady old Venamoinen, saw the streak of light falling down there through the sky and landing somewhere out there on the earth and at once, Venamoinen made ready to go on a journey to find that fire. But he did not go alone. He went to his brother, his friend, his sometime rival, but his companion now, Ilmarinen. Ilmarinen the smith. The one who some stories say forged the sky above itself. 
but who now? Now his forge was cold and bare, with no fire. But Wainamoinen said to him, Ilmarinen, friend and brother, let us go together, for I have seen, I have seen fire fall from heaven. And the two of us, we might bring it back so that the land of Kalevala should have warmth and light again. So Ilmarinen made ready too, and together they set off. And it was a long journey and a hard journey. And it took them many, many miles over frozen hillsides and deep valleys and black forests. But in the end, they came to the shores of a great wide lake. And as they walked around that lake, they saw shadows shift and a shape emerge from the darkness. And this was the air daughter. And she said to them, you, all men of this land, where do you come from and what is it you are seeking? And Venemoina said, we come from Kalevala and we have come seeking that burning light, that shining fire that dropped down to earth, not far from here. And she said, well, you have come to the right place. It was indeed very, very close to here that the fire landed, but to find it, that will indeed be hard. The fire, when it fell, it landed here in this very lake, deep down in these very waters. And when that fire sank down to the bottom of this lake, then the waters boiled and roiled and frothed and bubbled until the waters rose up high around the shores of the lake. And the foam would have been higher than your heads. And all the fishes of the lake were thrown up high with the foam. And not one of them could reach it to put it out. Except one, one small, tiny, silvery white fish, which splashed down through the royals and tumbled through the foam and swam up to the spark of that fire, the spark that still glowed there deep in its heart, and it opened its mouth wide and boom, swallowed the fire down. And when it did that, then the waters cooled, and the foam settled, and the waves and the roiling splashed back down, and all the fish were free to swim on. And swim on they did, but that white fish, it was not long before it felt oh, a burning in its stomach, Oh, a pain in its gut. Oh, and it cried out, Oh, who will relieve me of this pain? Is there not a fish who will swallow me to take this horrible suffering away? And there was one. Eventually, a trout approached, rainbow shining through dark water. And it came up behind that white fish and it opened its mouth wide and <coughs> swallowed the white fish down. And the trout could swim on. But it was not long before the trout felt in its belly a burning in its stomach, a pain in its gut, and it twisted and it thrashed, but it could not make it go away. And so then the trout cried out, is there not a fish who would swallow me down, gulp me down whole to make this suffering go away? And eventually there was a fish. And this fish was a great grizzled 
hardy, horny pike who swam up behind the trout and opened its jaws wide and with a <laughs> swallowed that trout down. And said the air daughter, this pike had then swum down between the rocks in the deepest, furthest, most obscure part of the lake and had not come out. And there was no finding it there. But Vaynermine, steady old Vaynermine, and he said, well, well, you and I, friend Ilmarine, are we not men of smart thinking and clever ideas? Together, we can catch this fish, I feel. And so it was that they went off up the hillsides, into the bushes and the woods, and they gathered juniper branches and willow leaves. And from the juniper and the willow, they wove a net, a great skein that they could stretch across the entire lake. And so they did. And each took turns, trawling through the water with that net. And it went deep, and it was weighted well, and many, many, many fish they caught. But each time they looked, nothing. The pipe, nowhere to be found. And so, steady old Venomwin, and he looked at the net, and he looked at Ilmarinen, who looked back at him, and he said, okay, we try a bigger net, and we make it out of something else. We must make it out of hemp. Are there people hereabouts who might be growing hemp? And there were people in their cold, dark huts, but no hemp were they growing. So Venomoinen went up onto the hillsides until he came to an open patch of ground with good deep soil. And there he sowed hemp seeds, and there he stood, and there he sung. And he sung to the hemp seeds deep down sleeping in the earth. And he sung them awake, and he sung them into life. And he sung the hemp stalks high up out of the ground until the whole field grew in but one night. And when the people saw this, then they were amazed. And so all the people came together and they harvested that hemp and from it, they wove rope that could be tied and woven further into a net, a net so great, weighted down so heavy that it could reach a hundred fathoms. And it was then, that that net was stretched wide across the lake. And again, Venamoinen and Ilmarinen hauled the net through the deep waters, through the dark tides. And many, many, many fish were caught, and each time they lifted it to the surface, then thousands upon thousands of white fish and trout and salmon and perch were there to be enjoyed, but none of them were the fish that they were really after. And so they tried hard and they tried longer and the pike down between its rocks, it saw the weights scraping across the bed of the lake. And would it come out? It would not come out until Bainamoinen and Ilmarinen were wading waist deep, chest deep, shoulder deep in the icy water and heaving with all their might to drag that great net 
as deep and hard and strong as they could through the water and then the pike could escape no longer and it found there was hemp around its neck there were ropes around its shoulders and it was being dragged up 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 through dark water out into the air and between them, Benamoinen and Ilmarinen hauled it onto the shore, to the quayside, to the village, where all the people gathered round. And Benamoinen looked at it and he said, But dare I touch this without gloves upon my fingers, without mitts upon my hands? And at that moment, a knife came spinning through the air from out of the sky, down from heaven. Someone had been listening and watching from up there. And Venamoinen caught that knife, and with it, he slit open the side of that pike. And there they found a trout, and slitting open the trout, they opened it up. And there they found a whitefish, and slitting open that whitefish, there they found fire. But fire found air. And that night, and the whole open world, and fire leapt from the fish, and onto the shore, and onto the hillside, and on to the brushwood, and the heather, and the hedgerows, and fire was everywhere. Fire ran like the wind, Fire raged and laughed and danced and leapt all across the whole land of Kalevala. And the people ran to their huts to take shelter. They stood forward. Ilmarinen, the trusty smith, looked to scoop some of this fire up for his forge. But as he bent and opened his arms wide and plunged his hands down to the depths of the flame. Then he was scorched and burned and rolled back onto the ground. And it was Venamoinen, steady old Venamoinen, who waited until the fire tired itself out and came to rest in the hollow between the trees. And he found it there, and he sang to the fire, fire. You have no cause to rage and run. Be peaceful, be steady. Take it easy. And he gathered the fire up on a piece of fungus from the woods, growing there in the tree trunks. And he carried it back to the people. And everyone was able to feed their own hearts from a little bit of that fire. And everyone was able to have warmth and some light on that dark winter's night once more. And Ilmarinen, rolling himself in the shallows of the lake, steaming as he did so, sat back and saw all the lights start to appear. And that is the end of my first story from the Calibala.